Happy International Women's Day 2021 and welcome to the She's All That video podcast. I'm your host, September Smith. I was so thrilled to have the opportunity to mark this Women's Day with a walk down memory lane with Japanese friends, catch up with what's happening there this year with respect to gender equality, and talk with a woman who is embodying the motto for IWD 2021, Choose to Challenge as she campaigns to become the first female mayor of Japan's fourth largest city in one of the country's most conservative prefectures. I'm also hugely grateful to my guests for agreeing to have this challenging conversation in their second language. Because after 15 years away, my Japanese sucks. She's all that. Hi, and welcome to the She's All That video podcast. And I'm your host, September Smith. And I am thrilled to say that today on this International Women's Day edition of the podcast, I am talking with some old and new friends of mine from Nagoya, Japan, about International Women's Day there. I have some history that goes back there. One of the people that I'll be speaking with today and I, we were co-organizers in the early 2000s of the International Women's Day Festival in, in Nagoya, Japan. But I want to introduce my guest today. And the first guest is my friend of 20 years, Akane Kurihara. Akane, welcome. Hello. Yeah. Back when I first met Akane, she's yeah. always been a powerhouse. She was an environmental researcher and a policy advisor with the Aichi Prefectural Government. She's a longtime feminist activist and organizer. She's a former lead singer of the feminist punk band Mela. And she's the co-founder now of Aichi Association for the Realization of Female Leaders. That's kind of like Emily's list, getting women into office in Japan. And as I said, we used to be co-organizers of IWD back in the day. A new friend of mine that I met recently through Akane is Keiko Ogata. And Keiko is running for mayor of Nagoya this year in the mayoral race that's happening next month. Keiko had been working in Japan up until the time that she got married. And then she and her husband and then family had moved for many years around the world. They lived in the United States, Belgium, and France. Keiko returned to Japan in 2000 and became an interpreter. And it was after the Fukushima disaster of 10 years ago that she joined the Green Party. I am so happy to have you here talking with me today to discuss International Women's Day. Welcome. Now, What's happening this year? I was I was excited to see that there's actually something happening for International Women's Day in Nagoya and other cities this year. What's going on? Well, we have a uh, um, new uprising uh, women group who um, protest against uh, sexual crimes uh, toward women, and uh, there are some young activists who uh, protest against uh, female poverty. Well, we uh, realize. Many a lot of problems since uh, 2019. Well, we we have a raising movement. Ah, interesting. So that's the focus. That's really cool. So what's been going on since 2019 that uh, we've now got a new awareness and a new interest in women's rights? First of all, um, in the April of 2019, we have uh, our awful court ruling against um, sexual violence. We have uh, four. Um, awful rulings. The worst was uh, the daughter was, have been uh, raped for 10 years or something by her real uh, biological father. And uh, the father ruled out not guilty in the local uh, court. So, and uh, that problem, since that ruling, well, we have uh, a lot of women who uh, stand, st- stand up. And uh, we, we started the uh, flower demonstration we called the demonstration yeah. flower demonstration. So this yeah. demonstration is, what, what the, you said there were four cases. Coincidentally, there were just four really severe cases with really bad rulings in the spring yes. of 2019. So that kind of awakened people's awareness of mm-hmm. maybe the lack of fairness in the court system. Yes, that's right. And uh, uh, we heard uh, um, Me Too movement yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, around the world. And um, yeah, in uh, in the U.S. and in South Korea too, and we had the uh, same thing in Japan. We start we start the same movement in Japan. So Akane, this this yeah. flower demonstration is still happening. Yeah, right. Every month, every month we have a, a demonstration all over Japan. Many places in Japan. What does that look like? 
Yeah, uh, it's a uh, we we and we got together with a flower, and hear the survival voice. Oh, oh wow. just seeing uh, here. We stay and uh, just hearing the just hearing the survival victims, voice. Yeah. Victims' uh, voice story. Everyone needs to carry a flower, bunch of flower, flower. A, a, a flower. So we call this flower demonstration. So this is the eleventh of every month. And where do people gather for this? Yeah, uh, in in Nagoya case, uh, we we got uh, in a nanda sakae. Uh, do you know sakae? Uh, uh, this is the place where uh, when when we were in uh, in uh, two thousand two or something. Yeah, where we had uh, the uh, enormous IWD festival right yeah, there yeah, in the yeah, of Sakai. That's, that's place. Oh. every month. Now that's that's fairly new. I mean, this kind of thing was not talked about. I mean, I lived in Japan for about fifteen years, mm. and as much as pro there were problems, it was not discussed in society. Now we we get together. Well, kind of twenty or thirty people get together every month on eleventh uh, of the month at the center of uh, Nagoya, yeah. and uh, we carry flowers and we put the candles. Um, on on the park in the park, and we hear the victims' stories. Well, kind kind of quietly. Some victims uh, don't want to be identified, so we we uh, try to avoid their exposure to the media. Mm -hmm. But we hear a lot of uh, different stories. So we realize that the sexual violence is not rare. It often yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. That's a point. So we've got the we've got the issue of the sexual violence and kind of like the Japanese version of the Me Too movement. But mm. you were also saying that there has been a real spike in, in poverty amongst women in the last couple of years. Tell me a yeah. bit about that. One thing is a young, the suicide case increase among young females. Now mm. is that because of the poverty or the social yeah. situation? Uh, both, both, I think. We don't know um, exactly what's happening mm. among females, but maybe we uh, assume the, the poverty, you know, economical problems and the mental and the social. Yeah, social. both. Also, a domestic violence case is increased in Japan. Mm. And then with oh. the pandemic and everybody having to yeah, be in yeah. their homes. Yeah, in the home. And, yeah, domestic violence is going up. And like in North America, I understand that women have borne the, the, the greatest impact of the loss of jobs. Akana, yeah. you had shared some tables with me, yeah. the graphs about how yeah, yeah. it's by far women who have lost their livelihood. Mm -hmm. And I mean, is there any kind of program there to help out? Because if mom doesn't have any money and many families are just a single parent family, what mm. happens with the children? Right. Well, we have some volunteers who offer the help call for oh, yeah, visiting victims or sexual violence victims or those uh, female victims are very vulnerable, so it is even difficult to reach them. We, we don't know where they are. So some are, have a good willingness to call, to the help call, help. Yeah. but others stay, just stay home. Just stay home. Well, well, we assume that uh, because of a pandemic, females lo lose uh, their jobs. Well, many, uh, many work as a part-time job, uh, part-time workers, uh, so that they are the first people who get sucked. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, many uh, single mothers have uh, even even worse problem. Uh, they have to raise the children in the children. But during uh, the lock lockdown of a school, children stay at home. Well, single mothers need to stay with them with children mm -hmm. or just leave children at home alone. Mm -hmm. So even a difficult situation for female, I mean, um, single mothers. So like that, female work, a lot of female, even a lot of female work as part-time job. So you were saying that this is actually manifesting as a, a spike, an enormous spike in suicides. I mean, I recall suicide was more of a male thing, you know, back when I lived in Japan and I've seen the numbers, the charts that Akane sent me and it just spiked, especially last yeah. autumn. Okay. Women, in like almost more than men were, were, were suddenly committing suicide because of, yeah. I guess, the poverty, the pressure, the domestic yeah. violence, yeah. the sexual yeah. violence. So the people are becoming really much more, women are becoming much more aware yeah. about yeah. what's happening in society. Yeah, we think so. So 
back in 2002, Akane, when we did <laughs> our International Women's Day, we decided on the theme and we thought it was very provocative at the time. It was Japan, why number 41? And what we were referring to was the World Economic Forum mm -hmm. in the rankings that year. As much as Japan was in, number, in the top five in yeah. industry, education, health, et cetera, et cetera, when it came to the ranking for sexual equality, they were number 41 that year. So we were talking about how yeah. shocking is this. In the 20 years since then, Japan has dropped from 41 to down to 121st place. Countries that you would maybe not consider even traveling to because they might, you know, be considered unstable and, and dangerous have a higher ranking for women's equality than Japan. What's going on? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh... Uh, uh, another countries uh, was um, try to improve the many uh, about uh, uh, gender equality. Uh, also, Japan uh, made uh, made some uh, efforts, but uh, it it was it wasn't enough. I think it's uh, especially in the political political environment and uh, economic environment um, or something. Business executives. Business executives, yeah. I, I had read something about Abe's Xi economy and how it was, after many years, it was just proved, it sounded like it was going to be a big help for gender equality, but mm. it was just smoke and mirrors, no real impact or change in the situation. Mm. So that, you, telling me about the numbers, it's gone from 41, it's dropped 80 places down to 121 out of oh, 153. No. It's pretty near the bottom. Yes. They prompted me to go look at this World Economic Forum report, and what they had said was that Japan's, and I quote, Japan's standing in the international community will keep plummeting due to its failure to empower women. Mm, yeah. They, uh, in their estimation, the World Economic Forum says if Japan does not start having more gender equality in the power, in the governance of the country, mm. nothing's going to change. That's right. Yeah. Oh. For gender equality uh, among female, Japanese female, um, their percentage of uh, business executives, female executives, uh, stays uh, ten percent, and their uh, um, female politicians ten percent something, mm -hmm. because a uh, man says if female are able, female have uh, a talent, uh, they can raise the career by themselves, so they don't have any uh, quota or any uh, help, special assistant. Uh, assistance toward a female. So that's why fe Japanese females stay, stay the same. Um, mm -hmm. There are other countries uh, try to improve the female situation and ranking. They, so Japan's economy used to be good, very mm -hmm. uh, strong, but uh, after the bubble burst, the Japan's economy go down. No. And, and that was considered to be like around 1989, 1990, the yeah. bubble burst. Yeah, so yeah that was 30 years ago. And after, mm. even uh, 30 years ago, well, we don't have uh, um, talented uh, women, uh, talented women uh, working place. So the half of the talents of the population well, were not, wasted. not working, wasted. That's right. So that's, I think that that's why um, Japan cannot recover their economy. Mm. Their uh, problem gets more serious, like uh, the difference between uh, um, rich and poor increased. So when a female stay as a part-time job, uh, when female cannot join the, the decision-making, well, the economy and society will not get improved. Yeah. And also if you have the same, and it has been the same party yeah, right. Since the end of the Second World War, there has not. Was there a small one little time when there was a change? Yes, just the three years. Three uh, years. Get yeah, three years. So three years out of like almost what eighty uh, years. Are, so uh, this the same mentality and the same thinking that was very effective to help Japan recover from the devastation of the Second World War and rebuild and develop and and build it to become the economic power that it was in the nineteen eighties. That same mentality, that same 20th century male mentality right. is still yeah. in power. That's right. So man-centered mentality. Man worked, work outside of the house. A female stayed at home, care children, uh, the household chores, and the care for elderly. 
um, so every uh, like this. But uh, now, well, mothers and the wives cannot stay at home. They need to earn more money because men, men's salary get down. So the family need to be afforded by both men and mother and their father working salary. And international research shows both through the United Nations and through the World Economic Forum that in the countries where women are more economically empowered and have more of a role in you know, earning a wage and, and say in the society, yeah. the GDP tracks with that. You have a good situation for women, your GDP is going to be stronger. The numbers bear that out. Mm -hmm. So that old way of thinking does not work anymore. That's right. That's right. So, which brings me, Kago, to our whole subject of you're running for mayor. Now, you're yeah. running for mayor in Nagoya, which is in Aichi Prefecture, where I have lived and where you, where you guys live. What's the history of women in politics in Aichi? Yeah, actually, uh, in Aichi Prefecture, we have no, no government leader or uh, town mayor or city or mayor or village governor. Mayor. No, 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 no. Never. One. You've never had um, a female. Never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Among, among 47 prefectures in Japan, only 10 or uh, something, something very rural uh, prefecture uh, was in such a, such a situation. Yeah. But Aichi uh, is, it, isn't Nagoya like the fourth biggest city in Japan? Yeah, right, right, right. right. Well, that's not Even exactly so. a rural area. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, yeah, Aichi has a Toyota company. Yeah, um, uh, yeah as you know. So yes. uh, very industrialized, industrialized uh, part, uh, and also a very conservative uh, place, uh, I think. Mm. So mm, um, uh, men is ruling the society in Aichi. Well, when's the election this year, Keiko? Uh, it is uh, um, April 25th. Yes. Mm. There are both Mm -hmm. Oh, geez, I'll be very excited to see how that turns out. Well, the um, the hashtag and the phrase for this year's International Women's Day is choose to challenge. And you're choosing to challenge this whole thing of there's never been a woman mayor, there's never been a woman governor in Nagoya mm -hmm. or in Aichi. So, I mean, we've talked about why women's representation is important. And I, for that very reason, I think it's essential that more women like you get elected. So what are the things that you are campaigning on? You said you had four major platform items. Yes. Well, um, I decided to run for mayoral election uh, to raise voice about the climate change. If that is uh, very urgent, well, we need to uh, decrease the, the emission, what, CO2 emission by... 45, more, almost uh, half and cut in 10 years. But that is the main reason. And uh, well, man-centered mentality is always destructive for nature and development at any cost approach. But uh, I think female, tend to, uh, female can uh, focus on, on what is sustainable and what is good for everybody. Because well, once, problem started, the women have to clean up the mess. That is always, always women. Yeah, so I think that changes how we look at things. We don't mm -hmm. go just like, here, here's the solution. It's, this is a possible solution. Who's going to mm -hmm. clean up the mess if it goes sideways? So yeah, yeah. there's a different way of looking at things. So yes. you've got the, the environment of the climate, which as you say, this has to happen in the next 10 years. And we have known since the Kyoto Protocol in the 1990s, yeah. which was almost 30 years ago, We've yeah. known this was necessary. We only have 10 years left, kids. Come on. So it's essential that action be taken now. So that's one of your <laughs> planks. And what else are, are you campaigning on? Yeah, yes. Well, besides the environmental issue, I, of course, we need to recover from the pandemic impact. That is a, a big mess which the um, COVID-19 made to us. We have serious, pro serious economic problem and social problem. Uh, as we discussed, the suicide rate raised uh, and the, the economic uh, problem gets serious among uh, female part-time workers and single mothers. So well, we need to hear more from uh, women and uh, children, take care of children. Uh, children has, uh, have uh, have serious problem too. So the second, uh, um, second problem, second issue is uh, recover from COVID-19 impact. 
Well, there, a lot of countries are looking at their recovery plan right now. Yeah. And mm -hmm. people, I think, that are more farsighted realize this is an opportunity mm -hmm. to yeah. change the direction of our society and kind of renegotiate that social contract. Like, what's important now? Mm -hmm. We've got to come up with a new paradigm for this. This, th And we need new voices at the table. We need women decision makers to be part of that if you're going to get a different outcome. That's right. That's right. We need to change the their a philosophy or totally change so their um women i think women can change because uh, women uh, were forced to be at the bottom of the society in the workplace and at home in the, um in school so women can well you know raise their voice and awareness can, can but i think it should be noted that as much as traditionally women in in japan once, I mean, I remember when I lived there, as soon as you were of a certain age, it was like, shouldn't you get married now? And then once you married, it was pushed out of the workplace. But Japanese women are highly educated. The rate of university and college level education there for girls is one of the best in the world. So it's not like that, not that anybody should ever doubt that women have the an ability to be making decisions for these kind of things, but like these are educated people. And mm. I, I often think of things in terms of if Martians, if aliens came down to the earth and they were trying to understand our world and they were going, well, let's see, we have these humans, half of them have no power. They yeah. have no voice. They have no money. What's going on with that? Why aren't they taking, because they have something to contribute. This society would be richer and better if everyone was contributing, but we just take it as normal that, oh, of course the men should run everything. Mm. Time for women's voices. So you were saying you've got the, recovery you've got climate change you mentioned mm -hmm. children and that is not a small thing all over the world with the impacts of the pandemic we're seeing children not being able to go to school there's mental problems there's nutritional problems because of impoverished impoverished families that's huge and yeah. i think women's women's voices on that issue would be very very critical to making sure we get that right that's right What's well, the situation with children in Japan right now? Is is that being spoken about? No, um, children are raised by mainly by mothers, and uh, well, children have uh, get, having a uh, having a problem too. They are not taught democratic issue. Well, well, democracy. Oh, of course. They don't. They don't learn what democracy is. Is yeah. just uh, they just learn well how friendly to others. Well, what is the harmony in the society or, or in the classroom or in the family? Mm -hmm. So some children who have uh, um, very, for example, very talented, even a talented children can't show their talent because uh, mm -hmm. somebody will envy somebody. So somebody can bully you because, uh, well, because of their talent. Mm -hmm. So stay harmony, stay harmonious um, among all, others. But all they told. So I think they are frustrated. And uh, during the pandemic uh, lockdown, well, the children were the first people who were locked down. Well, children, well, the school closed for four months. They need to stay at home. Even uh, before the restaurants and the um, stores are closed. Oh. And are the first people who forced to be be at home. So who was home they taking care of them if mom was working? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So they have academic um, uh, academic problem. They have mental or they emotional, especially. Yeah. I think emotional problem. They they get lonely, was isolated, separated from their friends. And uh, mother is always uh, scolding, well, doing yeah. this. Don't do mess. <laughs> I, I yeah. Well, mothers uh, get nervous too. No, oh, they're stressed out. And when when people say, you know, like, oh, the kids are lonely, blah, it that's a big deal. These are developing brains. They're they're developing their 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 brain, their body, their their psyche. This is a really traumatic event for the kids. It's not just they can't go to school to play with their friends. This psychiatrists are seeing this is huge. So I'm glad to hear that that's part of your platform. And finally, I was rather surprised to hear that the fourth thing on your platform was gender and women's oh. issues. Yeah, gender equity. But that is the straight 
uh, issue I want to um, I want to uh, insist equity between genders, female, men, and uh, the sexual minority, and even uh, children are not uh, um, children don't don't know how to raise their voice when uh, the sexual attacker approaches. Don't don't touch my body like something like this. So gender equity is very important. Um, well, gender equity uh, education is also important. And uh, we need to um, fix the attitudes uh, of people at home, at work, and uh, even in, at, in the government, even in a municipality of Nagoya. I think it is very important. Oh, yeah. And if, if I think it would just be so amazing if you were elected mayor. I think that's exactly what IG needs now is a strong, intelligent woman who's who's got ideas and priorities for the future. Yes. On those four very, very important issues. Mm -hmm. So the election is the 25th of April. 25th of April. A female need to join the decision-making process. Female need to be uh, decision makers. So that means uh, there are more female politicians needed, more mm, business executives in uh, com companies and corporations, and in uh, local and municipal government and uh, well, national government, of course, we need more workers and sh managers and executives and mothers, and, and equality between mothers and fathers in the more family tie in, at home. Awesome. We want the first mayor in IG, and I would be very, very pleased to say that I had the pleasure of interviewing her and oh, yeah, right. thank you for International mm -hmm. Women's Day. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. It's been a pleasure. There's so much more we couldn't have gotten into. And Akane, we definitely have to do another discussion because you yeah, have just really. a wealth of knowledge about the history of, of the women's movement in, in IG. But for now, we'll call that a wrap. Thank you so much, gals. Thank you. Thank you, September. Thank you so much for being with us today. Don't forget to take a look down in the notes to find any of the links to the goodies we talked about in today's podcast. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel so you Jesus. don't miss the next episode. Rate us or review us on iTunes or on YouTube and share us with a friend that you think might just need a bit of inspiration to start doing her own awesome shit. Do you know an incredible gal that's all that that you think the world needs to know more about? Head on over to our Facebook or our Instagram channel and DM me. Tell me about her. We'll see if we can't get her on the She's All That podcast. <laughs>